That trip that I took with Kennedy to, to, to Paris and Vienna and London, well, when we got to Vienna, he set up a breakfast meeting uh, the, the first day he was there with uh, Khrushchev and they were going to speak about politics or whatever they were getting together. But he said, before the meeting starts, I want to introduce you to a young lady. And he called me in, Pierre brought me to the meeting, and I was introduced to Khrushchev. And Kennedy said to him, this lady wants to do a film about the Kremlin. She's already done very interesting films. He didn't say what, because I hadn't done anything yet of importance. I had done The Nation's Future. And he said, part of what we should present to America is who is Russia? She wants to show your history, your culture, your artwork. And Khrushchev, who spoke only Russian, said, Pochamunyet, which means why not? So I broke out my really wonderful three months study of Russian and he looked at me and laughed and he said to me in Russian, your grammar is very bad. And my answer to him was, I understand your grammar is just as bad. <laughs> so we became instant friends <laughs> and uh, he said, we will be in touch. And so after that meeting, uh, when we got back to the United States, I kept writing letters. I had been writing letters for years. They never answered letters. But one day, on June something, 10th or something like that, um, the man who was then the, uh, the NBC correspondent in Moscow, each network was allowed one person. Everybody on the staff had to be Russian, but they were allowed one journalist that was the head of the bureau. And he got a call, and he called uh, Julian Goodman at NBC and said, listen, Lucy Jarvis is coming to Moscow on June 23rd. So Julian Goodman said, I don't understand. How did you know that? And he said, well, I got a call from the Kremlin. And they said, what? airline and what time is Mrs. Jarvis arriving on June 23rd to Moscow to work on her film on the Kremlin? And the reason I remember the date is because it's my birthday. And so on June 23rd, with two weeks notice, I took off for Moscow with the blessings of Irv Gitlin, who had to let me off from the nation's future. And he said, this is the way he said, you could, if you don't get it, he said, if something happens, you can always say, well, you really wanted to do a program for the nation's future, and so that you won't have egg on your face, which was very important because I was still the only woman, and I have to tell you, there were 19 producers in New York, Chicago, Washington, California for NBC, and they were not very happy about me. They learned to love me after a while because I'm, I gave them, I gave the network such a boost in ratings because of these shows, because they were so unusual and, un, and never before happening. But at that time, it was very difficult. So Irving Gitlin really covered my rear end by saying, well, if nothing else, she's going to do something for a nation's future. But by the time I got to Moscow, I knew I was going to talk them into letting me do the Kremlin. And had the Kremlin ever been filmed before, never, ever, by never, anybody? No, never been done. There was a book that was done, uh, a, a picture book that was done, but it was never, never done on film. They never allowed Russians to film inside the Kremlin. And I filmed every corner, every inch of that building. And of what that, were It wasn't a building, of that, of that whole complex. 60-something acres of crowd. <laughs> what were some of the technical difficulties in filming inside the Kremlin? There were a lot of problems. There were a lot of problems, and I have to tell you that the, well, uh, the crowning blow was that after I shot 50,000 feet of 35 millimeter color, of which you use only about 5,000 of 35 millimeter in, in an hour show, NBC, instead of storing the film, five years later when I went to get to use some of that film, I found out they had burned it because there was no space in the warehouse. 
Nobody had ever before or since been allowed to film inside the Kremlin. So the only people who have a full roster of that film was what I gave the, the, the Kremlin. I had, I had a, a whole, and when I, when I processed the film, I had it done in duplicate. So I had, because I promised them that I would give it to them. And in that way, I didn't have to show them one foot of film. I took the whole thing out. And that was very unusual for them to allow me to film as much as I did in their sanctum sanctorum and never show it to them until they saw it on the air or until I sent them a, a foot by foot a copy of everything I had. So they're the only ones who have all my film. NBC only has the cut story. Hmm. That was a scandal. But it was very tough filming there. And uh, for example, we decided we wanted to show what happened during the Napoleon era and how the Russians burned down the Kremlin. And so I went to a ballet performance one night and they show, the ballet was War and Peace and they showed how they burned the Kremlin. And I, I went to see the technicians and the guys, they have incredible theater way ahead of us. And they told me how they, man, how they showed the Kremlin burning and they with these smudge pots and so on. So I did the same thing and I called the, the Moscow government and I warned them. I said, let the fire department know that this is not for real. We're shooting a film here. And everybody was warned and still at three o'clock in the morning when we set the fire, fire engines came from everywhere. The whole city was up in arms. They thought the Kremlin was on fire. Did you use uh, an all NBC crew, or were there a Russian crew as well? No, we had, well, of course we used a Russian crew as well. I, even the NBC crew was an international crew. The, the chief cameraman came from London, and I had two people from France. In fact, the whole crew was an international crew, and then we used, uh, that was a courtesy to the uh, Russians, to allow them to send people along with us cameramen and and most of the time I wouldn't let them film because they had such terrible equipment such noisy terrible equipment but I let them work with our crew and uh, it was it was uh, it was an eye opener for them they really I think one of the reasons they allowed me to do this is because they wanted to see how we work and how we shoot in color and what we do remember that that was the first major program in color on television the Kremlin and when we finished it, General Sarnoff went on the air and said, if you want to see the Kremlin in color, go out and buy an RCA color set. And they sold four million sets in one month's time before the show went on the air. Um, how much uh, access did you have? Could you go anywhere in the Kremlin? We went anywhere. I had, it, it was incredible what they had. They opened the doors everywhere. And when you did have a problem, what did you do about some of the uh, problems that you came, that you, you know, be, befronted oh, I, you? There was a man who was assigned to us who I used to have big fights with all the time. But <laughs> we, we barreled through. There was, uh, there was one time when Khrushchev, who was supposed to have been cooperating and doing an interview, we did, a, I had a wonderful idea for a, for a shot in which we dollied down this, uh, this uh, corridor in the part of the Kremlin where the government was. When we finished shooting all of the historical portions, including, by the way, the apartment that Stalin had lived in. Stalin was the only one who lived in the Kremlin, beside the czars, of course, but the only one of the, the new regime who was allowed to live in the Kremlin. After he died, or was thrown out, he died, uh, they Everybody else after that had an apartment somewhere else on Moscow Hills and so on. There was no longer use, uh, use of the Kremlin for a leader. It was only for historic purposes or museum. But I filmed his entire apartment, which had been closed to the public. I also filmed an apartment, by the way. They said to me, we want to invite President Kennedy and his wife. And they took me to this apartment. It was beautiful. And they said, tell us what color she likes. I mean, I, I had to guess. I said turquoise. 
So they did the entire woman's bedroom in turquoise. The carpets, the drapes, the bedspreads, the, I mean, the, the appointments in the bathroom. I, mean, it was, I was drowning in turquoise. In the end, they never came because, unfortunately, he was assassinated.